Elimination method, solving a linear system by adding. This is lesson 8.3a. We have learned how to solve a system of equations using substitution. The elimination method is another method used to solve a system of linear equations. In this method, one variable is eliminated by adding or subtracting the two equations of the system to obtain a single equation in one variable. So here are the steps for the elimination method. First thing we do is add or subtract the equations to eliminate one variable. Then, second thing we do is solve the newly formed equation for the other variable. Last, we substitute the value of that variable into either equation to find the value of the remaining variable that was eliminated in step one. Now, if this sounded confusing, stick with me. I'm going to walk through it. We can use the addition property of equality to solve systems of equations. Adding the same quantity to each side of an equation, the equation will remain true and the sums equal. If we have 4 equals 4 and we add 2 to both sides of the equal sign, it's still going to be true. We're adding the same quantity to each side, the sums are going to be equal. Adding equal quantities rather than the same quantity to each side of an equation also results in equal sums. So keep in mind, if we're adding a negative 2, it's the same as subtracting a positive 2. If we have 6 plus a negative 2, it's going to equal 4. And if we do 6 minus 2, it's going to equal 4. Using the addition property to solve systems is called the elimination method. To use this method, one pair of variable terms in the two equations must have coefficients that are opposite. So we stack the like terms. We have like terms here, x, like terms here, y, and even after the equal sign, we have some constants, don't we? So the opposites right here, a plus y minus y, we can make a zero pair out of them. We write it as x plus y equals 5 plus x minus y equals 3, what we're doing is we're adding a positive y plus a negative y. That is going to create our zero pair and eliminate this y variable. All we're left with is our equation with one variable, 2x equals 8. We solve for x by dividing both sides by this coefficient 2, and we get 1x is equal to 4. Now, we substitute 4 for x into either equation to solve for y. We have 4 plus y equals 5. We're not going to subtract 4 from each side. This is using the addition property and the elimination me method. We're going to add a negative 4. It's the same thing as subtracting a 4, but we're saying we're adding a negative. We have a positive 4 minus plus a minus 4, that's going to make a 0 pair and eliminate it. And we're going to do 5 plus a negative 4, which is the same thing as 5 minus 4. So we're going to get y is equal to 1. The solution to the system is 4 for x, 1 for y. And we can check the solution by using 4 for x and 1 for y in each equation. Instead of x plus y equals 5, we have 4 plus 1 equals 5, and that's true. Instead of x minus y equals 3, we have 4 minus 1 equals 3, and that's true. Let's try another one. It's telling us to solve using the elimination method. We have our system right here, 2x plus 5y equals 17, and 6x minus 5y is equal to negative 9. We've got our variable terms stacked nicely on top of each other, and first thing we're going to do is add to eliminate this positive 5y and negative 5y. We're going to add 5y plus negative 5y, which is the same thing as taking it away same thing as subtracting, we're going to create a zero pair. And since we're adding, we have 2x plus 6x, that's going to give us 8x. And 17 plus a negative 9 is a positive 8. We have 8x is equal to 8. That's our new equation with one variable. Now we divide both sides by the coefficient 8, and we get 1x is equal to 1. Third thing we do is we plug this one in, we substitute it in to either of the equations for x. So we have 2 
plus 5y equals 17. Now, again, because we're using addition property of equality, we're going to add a negative 2 to each side to create a zero pair here and eliminate it. 17 plus a negative 2 is 15. We have y is equal to 3. When we divide both sides of the equation by this coefficient 5, we get 5 over 5, same numerator and denominator, we have 1y. When we divide 15 divided by 5, we get 3. We know y is equal to 3. We know x is 1, y is 3. Our solution is 1, 3. We can check our solution by graphing. We have our two equations, and the solution we came up with was 1 for x, 3 for y. The way we can do this is for this equation, we find the x-intercept. The x-intercept is where the line crosses the x-axis. To find the x-intercept for this equation, we set y as 0. So we have 2x plus 0 equals 17. That's 2x equals 17. We divide both sides by this coefficient 2, and we get that the x-intercept is equal to 8 and 5 tenths. This is where the line is going to cross the x-axis. For the y-intercept for this equation, we set the x value to be 0. Now, this is just 2 times 0 is 0, so we have 5y equals 17. We divide both sides by this coefficient 5, and we get y is equal to 3 and 4 tenths. Now we know where the, this equation's line is going to cross the x-axis, and where it's going to cross the y-axis. We do the same thing for this equation. We set y to equal 0 to find the x-intercept. We find out that the x-intercept is equal to a negative 1 and 5 tenths. For the y-intercept, we set x to equal 0. Then we just have 0 minus 5y equals negative 9. We've eliminated this. And we divide both sides by this negative 5 coefficient. We get negative divided by negative makes a positive. y is equal to negative divided by negative makes a positive 1 and 8 tenths. Now, we set the y to 0 for the x-intercept. We set the x to 0 for the y-intercept. But for the y-intercept, we could just write each equation in slope-intercept form, couldn't we? We plot a point on the x-axis at 8 and a half, 8 and 5 tenths. Then we plot a point at 3 and 4 tenths on the y-axis for the y-intercept b. And we take a straight edge and draw a line through this point and this point. For this equation, we draw a point for the x-intercept on the x-axis at a negative 1 and 5 tenths. It's a negative 1 and a half for x. And our y-intercept b is 1 and 8 tenths which would be right here. If that's 1 and that's 2, 1 and 8 tenths would be just below the 2, wouldn't it? And we take a straight edge and draw a line through it. And we see where they intersect. Our graphed lines intersect at 1 for x, 3 for y, so our solution is true. It's actually much more accurate to check our solution by substituting the x and y value into each equation to see if the equations are true. We came up with 1 for x and 3 for y. If we substitute them into each equation, we're going to see that yes, they're true. If our ordered pair solution involves fractional values, it may be difficult to draw or read the graph. What if it said 1 and 37 hundredths for x and 3 and 58 hundredths for y. We would have to draw those hundredths somehow onto the graph in those little unit square boxes. That would be difficult. So before we go, I've got one more thing to show you. If we swap the order of the equations in the system, we will still get the same ordered pair solution and our graph will be the same as before the swap. Either way, the solution for these equations, for this system of equations, or swapped around, it's going to be 1 for x, 3 for y, and the intersection of the graph lines will be 1 for x, 3 for y. We're finished with 8.3a, and we're going to move on to b, solving a linear system by subtracting. We just did adding, now we're going to do subtracting. I hope the rest of your day goes well, and 
Please join me for the second part of the lesson. Bye.